that friendly faces uh, definitely make me happy. Uh, so that that is a really good thing. Thank you, Chris, for being here. Congrats on your award too. You know, I just shared your um, I shared your post on Facebook, and I said I love this guy. He's making quite a ruckus in Massachusetts, and so that's absolutely fabulous what you're doing. Uh, good to see you, Bill. I know you too, Kevin. So a lot of great people here. We are recording because this will be a training and I'd love to use it, you know, with other folks uh, um, that might not make the, the training. So we're all good with that. And I do have slides prepared and stuff. So I'm going to get those up in, in just a second. So um, before we uh, get really into it, I'm going to mute you, Kevin. And uh, just if you keep your eye on people like with that kind of stuff, um, I'd love to just know in the chat, you know, name, role, location. And what brought you to today's training, right? So name, location, role, and what brought you to today's training in the chat, please. All right, good to see you, Darcy. We're putting in the chat, name, role, location, what brought you to today's training. I see Drew there with the, uh, the football, soccer, which is great. Hopefully you're a Liverpool fan, I don't remember. If you're not, you have to go to a different training. Name, role, location. All right, Bill from Cherry Hill, right? Elementary, uh, you missed the mastermind. We miss you as well, but I know you're coming back. Uh, always looking to sharpen the saw. Today you will be sharpened, so you're going to enjoy that. Carrie, thank you. Curriculum Director, Killed Deer, North Dakota. Wow. I got a reminder again, and I'm actually at my desk so I could listen in. Wonderful. We are glad you're here. Uh, Kelly, Secondary Principal, Western Nebraska. Wonderful. Here today to connect with other leaders. You will connect. Drew in uh, Minneapolis uh, Elementary former mastermind member. That's right. Robert Daniel. I feel like, yeah, we have been, uh, we have been uh, emailing because of the Wyoming connection and love connecting with other leaders. Valerie, Texas. Yes. Read the mastermind book. Oh my gosh. That's great. Uh, and have participated in the challenges. Thank you for that. Really love it. Um, Darcy, Darcy, I wonder if you were the uh, principal. I saw you potentially put the uh, email in on the Principal Principal's Facebook group, if that's you, thanks. Yes, yes, that's me. All right, super cool. I'm glad you made it because uh, not always people show up. So I'm really happy you're here. And uh, Doc, Doc Jones, Massachusetts, came to the training today to continue to improve the practice. And Danny always helps uh, get this done with me. So, all right, that's great. Cool. Well, let's get started. Let me... Uh, share my screen. Oh, and Barb's coming in too. Man, I know a lot of these people today. You guys are all the best because uh, I feel like I'm presenting to family in some respects versus um, all these folks that who knows who they are. So this is this feeling really good for me. All right. Hopefully you can see uh, some slides right now. And did it get bigger for you? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Can you see? Full screen. All right, cool. Then we'll get started. So today's training is called uh, the Principal Success Path Leadership Training. And you certainly are going to want something to write on. So uh, if that's a notepad, you know, in pencil, if that is uh, on your computer and that kind of thing, uh, people that work with me know I'm about taking action. And so I want you to engage. I want you to communicate with each other. Uh, I want you to take down notes because I, I truly believe you're going to learn stuff today that's going to transform your, your leadership. Now, first sort of prompt, I want you just to consider these pictures, right? Uh, so there's a bunch of them there. And what do you think they, they have in common? And this isn't something you don't, you don't have to come off mute for it, although you can if you want to. It's perfectly fine. Uh, or you could put it in the chat and Jesse will read it. Um, but otherwise, uh, or you could just keep it to yourself. So what do you think those pictures have in common? And I'm just going to minimize the screen for a second because I have the participants up from uh, Zoom, and that was annoying to me. All right. Let's do just 30 more seconds. What do those pictures have in common? 
And if you do want to take yourself off mute, now's the time because we'll be moving on in just a second. Actually, 20 seconds at this point. All right, no worries. Uh, now I have some more pictures. So what do these three pictures have in common? And again, I just have 30 seconds on the clock. So if you want to share, now's the time, or you could put it in the chat. Oh, Colleen's joining, wonderful. You see some stairs, you see a puzzle, you see a map with some pins. So think about what those pictures have in common. All right, that was 30 seconds, so we'll keep moving. So it's my goal throughout this training today, the Principal Success Path Leadership Training, that I give you uh, a new way to see, a new perspective. Um, we're gonna talk about goals, we're gonna talk about making sure your feedback lands and we're gonna talk about creating world-class cultures. So at the end of this, I really do hope you have a new perspective. Now, some of you do know me, so uh, just be patient because some folks uh, I might be new to. My name is Daniel Bauer, Chief Ruckus Maker over at Better Leaders, Better Schools. And if there was only five things you knew about me, and I include this in all my trainings, but this is important. And here's a sort of meta level like tip. You are a character to the community you serve as principal, assistant principal, whatever your leadership role is. And you could either define what kind of character and what kind of story people tell about you, right? Or you could let people make up their own stories. So I prefer to engineer that myself. So if there are five things you knew about me, first thing would be that I am an unorthodox uh, leadership coach. And I believe why well, follow the rules when you get to make them up. So <laughs> I just, I cannot exist in a box. So I don't. Number two, uh, my first job was at a comic book shop, Fat Dutchies in Palatine, Illinois. And that's where my love for reading really uh, grew. I did not like reading until as an 11 year old, uh, I just, I hung out at Fat Dutchies every single day. So Chuck finally said, dude, do you want a job? And so I would, I would count inventory for the comic book uh, owner of Fat Dutchies. And anyways, yeah, Spider-Man is the best superhero. Uh, number three, a podcast changed my life. Honestly, a podcast changed my life. And in 2015, I started uh, my podcast. Mary. One second. Some people are mute. Maria, from Portugal. <laughs> All right, we'll get back to the training. Sorry about that. Okay, podcast changed my life. Uh, that's why I get to be here speaking to you now. And if you're not aware, you know, there's the Better Leaders, Better Schools podcast. Hope you listen, school leadership series. And then there's also uh, two books, Better Leaders, Better Schools Roadmap. Uh, and then this mastermind, Unlocking Talent Within Every School Leader, that came out recently in terms of uh, last fall, I think, and it was published by Corwin in the National School Superintendent Association. If you get value from this, um, from this training and you haven't picked up that book, uh, the mastermind book, it would really mean a lot to me if you could do that. And I know, Jesse, I think we'll put a link to where you can pick it up in the chat. All right. I've lived in four different states, four different countries. Did you know that? Fun fact. So I lived in uh, Chicago, Illinois. I've lived in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Houston, Texas, and then uh, Syracuse, New York is currently HQ. And the four countries around the world, well, U.S. is one. And then a quick geography lesson. Uh, I lived in uh, Belgium. I lived in Netherlands. And I forgot to put a... Uh, whatever, an arrow, but I lived in Scotland as well. Oh, there is the arrow. Okay, cool. So another thing is that I love terrariums. So when I lived over in Europe, they just had these everywhere in cafes and restaurants. And I just love this idea of a little world captured in glass. I don't know why. I just find it really peaceful. Maybe it's my moment of Zen, um, but I think they're gorgeous and I have them all over the house. And those are five things. You're going to get a sixth, a bonus thing. And see, I'm already being unorthodox. I don't even follow my own rules. And Alba is a big part of my story. So Alba is my puppy. 
uh, when we come off the presentation, you'll probably see her in the background. She's always sleeping on my recliner. If she's not uh, interrupting a presentation or a mastermind, that's her second favorite thing to do. I absolutely love school leaders. And my why is to connect, grow, and mentor every school leader who wants to level up. And I know that school leadership can be an incredibly isolating job. Uh, it's very difficult. A lot of folks might even call your job that you exist in a VUCA environment. And you know that just means that it's a volatile, volatile um, complex, uh, ambiguous, and it's just an incredibly difficult time. So uh, thank you for your commitment to leadership and education. Now, you're going to enjoy this training if you've experienced any of these challenges. And this, these are different challenges if you watch my 15 decisions. So this, this is a format I follow, but these challenges are different. So pain number one, um, if you've dreamed big dreams before, but you fell short in accomplishing them, then this training is going to help you out. Pain number two is if your feedback has ever fallen flat, right? Or if it's flat out rejected. That's not you, of course, right? Nobody here ever gets rejected given feedback. But if you have experienced that pain, I'm going to help. And then pain number three, uh, I hate when I spill coffee all over everything. But if, if your culture is a mess, that's what I'm trying to express in this slide. And if you feel like your culture could use a tune-up, then this, uh, this training is going to help out. Again, it's called the Principal Success Path Leadership Training. And there's a bunch of benefits you'll get from today too. So number one, you're going to straight up level up today. Like that's my goal, mini Mario to big Mario. You're going to upgrade what I call your leadership operating system. Uh, benefit number two, this is to the feedback. Which one do you resonate with more, right? When you're talking with a teacher post-conference, which teacher is looking back at you? The one on the left or the one on the right, okay? I hope it's the one on the right. Sometimes, ooh. It's that one on the left. And then benefit number three, uh, these, are, these are the All Blacks from New Zealand uh, rugby team, right? World-class, high-performing team, an incredible culture. There's great books written about them too. And so we're going to talk about building a world-class culture. I saw Chris Jones giving me a thumbs up. Don't mess with that guy. He is as uh, strong as the All Blacks for sure. So just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful around Doc. All right, my promise, I'm going to give you everything I can, you know, in about this hour or so that we uh, spend together. Of course, it's impossible to give everything that I want to, right? And so for those of you that potentially want to go deeper into the concepts taught today, uh, we can talk about how that'll happen. But believe me, you'll get tons of value um, in this training as well, even if you don't want to do the deeper dive. Totally fine. All right, so hopefully you're ready. Let's get to it. The principal success path is actually a program I built and uh, offered, facilitated for the first time in last summer, summer of 2021. And it's built on five steps. Those five steps are your 90 day plan, ruckus maker mindset, number two, number three, candor and feedback, number four, goals, achievement and accountability, and number five is powerful community. So what we're going to talk about in today's training, part of it is going to dive deeper into step four, which is our goals, achievement, and accountability. So the big idea here was what's the one obstacle you must overcome to achieve your goals? And the reason this is important, I want you to take a minute to consider your future self. I want you to fast forward for three years into the future. So it's March 3rd, 2025, right? And I want you to take 90 seconds or so to jot down how is that future version, future leader of you different than your current reality, okay? So three years from today, how is the future version of your leadership different than it is today? I'm going to take the slide down for a second, and uh, I do want people to actually come off mute soon and share. I don't know that everybody will share. Few people will, uh, but I would love to know how you're different 
in the future than you are currently. I'll start. Yeah, great, Bill. So um, my hope is that in three years, I'm out from underneath um, all, all of the pandemic hassles that uh, I've been dealing with for the last uh, two years. And, um, and that frees, frees up my ability to, um, to get some real deep work done and, and plan uh, meaningful, some meaningful programming things for my, for my building and the students, um, get them better involved in some leadership activities going yeah. forward. Brilliant. I love that. I talk a lot about how the, there, there's difference, right, between like the deep work and, and the work that creates real value versus the busy work, you know, and the to-do list type of thing. So I, I'm really resonating with what you said there. And there's no right or wrong. I just love what you said. We have space for up to four more people, but you don't have to share if you don't want to. I will share. Yeah, go for it. So um, as soon as you asked that question, the word that came to my mind was confident because I'm in my second year in a position that was new to the district um, and I'm in a new state, okay. um, not state of mind, but an actual state. Um, and so in three years, I am hoping to have my superintendent credential done, but just have confidence in what the structure of my position is um and just clarity and confidence in making the decisions that i need to make love that thank you carrie we hear that a lot confidence anybody else i'll share i will in three years i hope to have mentored four teachers into leadership positions being assistant principals and three assistant principals into principal positions mm -hmm. as well as having a thriving set of innovation pathways for post-secondary opportunities for students. Yeah, love it. And uh, I'll just reflect back to you too, with the teachers, the AP, AP to principals, you know, I like that it's tangible, measurable, right? You put a number around it. So you might consider too, like what, uh, how many pathways? I don't, I don't know if you've defined that yet. So three, okay, cool, brilliant. Anybody else? I am the king of wait time, but in this instance, I'm going to be the king of keeping us moving forward. So uh, that's fine. Let's go. All right. So that was talking a little bit about future self. So this is why it's important. Uh, I did a Facebook Live about this actually a, a week or two ago, but this is me in Nashville uh, at the AASA conference. So that'll be a conference Carrie's going to be going to because she wants to be a superintendent. And my latest book, uh, which I'm autographing there, published, co-published by AASA. So here I am in an ideal space, right? If you remember my why, to connect, grow, and mentor every school leader who wants to level up. And I made a decision that I was going to give away at least 100 books and not just like throw them at people. You know what I mean? Like have a conversation. So that, that means that I had to engage right with hundred, at least a hundred people that I don't know and get curious about their situation, how they lead and so on and so forth. And so here's the thing I, you know, I can make up like, okay, how do you experience me as, as uh, the chief ruckus maker? If you think I'm an extrovert, that's not true. Okay. I will tell you, I am actually very introverted and I don't like having conversations that much with people I don't know very well. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a challenge, right? So what do I do? Cause I have a hundred bucks. I'm introverted. There's all sorts of people I don't know. And there's like, that's a challenge. Plus my wife connect, grow and mentor every school leader who wants to level up. I need to have conversations with these superintendents. And so the books get shipped to Nashville. I find the Corwin booth. They show me the box. I open the box, take out 20 books. And you know what I do? I walk the hallways, staring at superintendents like a weirdo. And I talk to nobody, not a single person, right? I'm failing. I'm absolutely failing in playing small in that moment. 
And I'm my own worst enemy. I am the obstacle. There's, there's no, that nobody's wearing a lanyard that says, don't come talk to me, right? So it's all mindset. It's all me. I'm the problem. And when I get into that space too, I really start beating myself up, which could absolutely, you know, the wheels come off the bus, so to speak. Instead, I tried something that I was recently thinking about and it totally worked. And this is the big idea in why I had you consider your future self. So if it had to do with the confidence, if it had to do with the pathways, right? Like the future self stuff. Um, I thought about future me who has added, let's say 150 leaders with the opportunity to serve them in the mastermind, right? That's the short-term goal. Uh, further out, I would love that serve 1200 school leaders and my big hairy audacious goal somewhere between 10 and 20 years from now that number is 5,000 and when I thought about that and the future version of Daniel the chief ruckus maker that guy needed me to show up powerfully in the moment and so the guy who was scared to have conversations the guy that was just staring at superintendents and pacing the hall like a weirdo he melted away, he disappeared. And the future me, you know, came into my body. And I was a, I, I gave out the books. Uh, I ran out of books before um, the second day was even over. So then I just had to talk to people and no books. So that is the big idea, right? Knowing who you are becoming. And when you feel stuck, connecting with that version of yourself in the present moment, so you can do hard things. So I really, I really hope that's uh, resonating with you. Now I'm telling you right now, if you don't do it, right, what happens? You keep pay playing small. You keep potentially getting the results that you don't want, you know, not the big results that you desire. And again, you are the obstacle. So the question is, what are you willing to do to get out of your own way? So that's really all I want to say about big idea number one, which was the one obstacle you must overcome to achieve your goals. And the punchline, the obstacle is you. <laughs> all right, candor and feedback. Step three in the principal success path has to do with candor and feedback. So we'll dive into that a bit. And the big idea here is about landing, landing your feedback. Uh, as a school leader, you need to communicate well. And so as leaders, we want to be heard. <laughs> we want to make sure that that communication um, lands well. Uh, you know, the, the vision, the mission, the values, what you're all about, it can get very boring. It can get tedious to say things over and over. I promise you, your people haven't heard it enough, right? The uh, former CEO of LinkedIn, uh, Jeff Weiner said that, hey, the message isn't even starting to resonate until you're sick of saying it, right? Like that's just when it starts to resonate with people. So that's really important to note. One of my assertions is I think people, your people, your staff, they really want to have two questions answered when it comes to you, the boss, right? The leader. They want to know, number one, am I doing a good job? Number two, does my boss like me? right? You don't have to be buddy, buddy friends, but like, do you care about this person or does your skin crawl <laughs> when you see them in the office, right? Uh, actually, I don't want to tell this crazy story. I read a crazy story on Facebook today about uh, teachers and faculty and the mess that they leave in the bathroom. I'll just leave it at that. So uh, I couldn't believe it, but that person, they probably make the leader's skin crawl, all right? Now, what I want you to reflect on here and we'll do like another 90 seconds and share. I want you to think of the last time you shared some feedback that didn't land so well, that it went poorly, right? And I want you to jot down some notes. So the, the notes are, uh, think about the context of the conversation. I want you to think about how did you feel at the end of the conversation? How do you think the person that was receiving the feedback felt. And then overall, why do you think it went poorly? So I'll share that one more time. Some notes, uh, what's the context of the conversation? How did you feel at the end? How did the other person feel at the end? 
and why do you think it went poorly? And just like the other one, hey, if you got something to say, we're here all for it. We make each other better. All of us are better than any of us. So uh, don't be shy. I'll share. Uh, this was a little a little bit earlier in my career, but um, so hopefully I've gotten better and I feel like I've gotten better. Um, but the context of the conversation was improvement, you know, with the teacher and um, and I felt scared going into the conversation because I had never had to really have that kind of conversation. But I had a good plan and I had all my I felt like I had my, all my ducks in a row. So I thought I'm I got this. And, um, but in the course of the conversation, the other person, you know, let me know that they felt just uh, surprised a little bit and I'm kind of taken off guard. And I feel like obviously it would have gotten better if I had, I think if I'd set it up a lot better, if I had started the process sooner, you know, there, you know, all those kind of things, but it was kind of those, uh, I waited until it kind of hit the fan, I guess. And, and I should have started that process a lot sooner. So of course now I'm <laughs> uh, much better at that, but that was, like I say, she felt su surprised, you know, and that's a horrible feeling. Mm. So I understand, so. Yeah, got it. Thank you for sharing that. That surprise, it could catch us off guard, right? And that, that's one reason mm -hmm. feedback could uh, land poorly. Thanks, Melissa. Anybody else wanna share? I'll share. Yay, Julie, thank you. I have some, it's, um, it's really, I would say, I don't have a specific example of a time that I feel like it didn't go well, but I know myself well enough to know that sometimes in consideration of somebody's feelings, I don't always get the message I meant to get across. Mm. Like, as I'm really thinking about the person and considering their feelings, yeah. sometimes I worry that I, um, I hold back something that maybe I'm trying to say gently, like I'm beating around the bush, right? Isn't that the, that's the thing I would say. I beat around the bush so much that so I'm like, oh, I don't even know if my message got across. So mm -hmm. I know that about myself and it's something that I'm always um, looking for ways to get better at, so. Yeah, part of it is, you know, just ripping the Band-Aid off type of thing or eat the frog is what people say, like doing the task, you don't- you know. oh, You're so funny, I have eat the frog in my office. That's yeah, right. yeah. Well, eat the frog. Listen, as educators, we're already naturally very compassionate, which uh, at times can be a disservice, you know, to ourselves, right? Because um, you, you want to have high levels of compassion and empathy. Uh, but then we get into things um, like feedback sandwiches, which are total BS, honestly. Nobody wants to hear, oh, you're doing this real nice. And by the way, you're getting fired and uh, hope you have a nice day. I mean, that is so stupid. Honestly, it's just dumb. And so, um, yeah, cool. Well, we're going to move on just a sec. Anybody else want to share? I, I got a solution for you uh, with feedback sandwiches and all that kind of stuff. This is your opportunity if you want to share. Otherwise, we will move on, which is totally fine. All right, cool. So we'll keep going. So we just reflected on, you know, a conversation that didn't go so well, right? So here's the secret. And for mastermind members, this is going to be a review, but a good reminder. And here's the thing, like, just think, what is the one insight you need to get from this reminder that changes everything for you today? So in the mastermind, we read, thanks for the feedback, Douglas Stone, Sheila Heen. If you haven't read that book, I think Jesse's going to put a link for you in the chat, uh, go buy that, buy that, to, buy it after my book. This is the second book you should buy, okay? Uh, what you're gonna learn and thanks for the feedback is a very important point, which is this. Um, feedback, we think of it in terms of evaluation as principals, assistant principals, because we evaluate teachers. 
But according to Douglas Stone and Sheila Heen, feedback is also coaching and it's also appreciation, like praise, encouragement, right? And so um, when we were talking about the surprise, was that with Melissa, the surprise? Uh, sometimes somebody might be looking for, hey, boss, did you see this, like all this hard work I've put in? And maybe it's just something as simple as a bulletin board that is like super warm and welcoming and, you know, sees the kids and celebrates them. And you come in and tell them that their lesson sucked, right? They were looking for appreciation. They got evaluation. That's going to be a crossed wire and it's going to hurt, right? And it goes any way, you know, maybe you want to come in and appreciate somebody, but they actually want to be coached, you know? Uh, and so anyways, that's a big idea. That's really important. And the book uh, dives deeper into it. Another book we read in the mastermind was called Radical Candor by Kim Scott. There's a, a grid here where sort of uh, feedback can fall. And uh, there's two, two axes, one about caring with a high level of regard for people and one where you just don't, you don't care at all. And then you see challenge directly versus silence. And so, you know, if in my view, educators, we fall into ruinous empathy, that top left corner uh, quadrant way too much. We care. Big, big hearts, super big hearts, biggest hearts in any industry. But somebody does something that rubs us the wrong way and we don't address it, right? Uh, then you have people who uh, challenge directly, but they don't care. And it says obnoxious ag aggression, but in uh, Massachusetts where Doc's from, I think they call them mass holes, right? So we all know those kind of people. Uh, what you're going for is the really care and challenge directly. And that's what Kim calls uh, radical candor. Um, there's one of our BLBS mastermind coaches, uh, Gene Park. I know he has this up in his school and he's taught this grid to his faculty. And he says, hey, call me on it. You know, when we're talking and that kind of thing, where did I, where did I fall in our conversation? And he gets feedback in the moment, like, how powerful, right? And reflective. And so anyways, those are two tools that, that you can use. Now, this big idea in terms of making sure your feedback lands, uh, if you ignore this step, real change is not going to occur, right? Part of your job is to optimize the educational experience for everybody, all stakeholders in the building, right? Your faculty, your students, your parents, the, the community at large. And how's that going to occur? Uh, if people aren't taking to heart the message that you're sending and the feedback that you're offering, all right? So that's all I have to say about big idea number two, which is how to guarantee your feedback will land better than it is right now. All right. So step five of the principal success path is what I call powerful community. And the big idea number three that I want to teach in today's training is, uh, and I'm really, this one's the best one. What schools can learn from uh, business when it comes to building a world-class culture. And again, it doesn't have to do with the quality of your faculty. Uh, if you're really into evaluating people <laughs> in spreadsheets and you might have like red, yellow, and green type stuff, it has nothing to do with that. Um, yeah, so in the chat, I want you to reflect on how well you know your people right now. And Jesse, um, if you could help out, uh, I want you to put one, if you think you know your people, like who they are, like who they really are. One is you don't know them very well at all, right? Poor, poor level. A five is like, I know my people so well, Danny should shut up. I'm going to do a masterclass on getting to know your people right now. That's like how awesome you are. That's a five. So in the chat, we should see about 10 to 20 numbers. But are you a one or a five? Any number in between. One is poor, five is amazing. And Jesse, will you just read out the numbers so I can hear where people are at? We got three, four, four, three, four, three, five. Okay. Uh, a couple more threes, a couple more fours. So land in the middle there. You know what I should have done? And I'll, I'll do this next time. I'm going to let you all off the hook today. Uh, I, I just remembered this with a five point scale. It's true with a 10, too. So here's this is like a bonus tip I'm going to teach you right now. I forgot about it, but I learned it in the moment. Okay. 
uh, if you put a three, you're kind of hiding, right? You didn't really take, you didn't make a choice. And uh, cause it's in the middle, you're, you're neutral. So um, if you do a five point scale, don't do a four, right? And it's either like really poor, like really poor, poor, okay, and really good, right? And if you do a 10 point scale where people hide is number seven, everybody picks a seven, okay? So I'm not, I'm not judging you in the moment. I'm just giving you a little hack, a little, little tip. And that way you'll get a stronger sense of where people are at. But thank you, Jesse, for sharing that. Um, this, this matters tremendously. And listen, we know this quote from uh, Theodore Roosevelt. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? And if you ignore this step, I guarantee like there's just there's no chance that you're going to be a great leader. You could be okay. You can get the job done, but you're not going to be the transformational kind of leader that everybody on this call wants to be. Uh, you certainly can't, you can't wear a ruckus maker hoodie if you don't uh, show people that you care. All right. And so this is really, really, really important. So this is the exciting idea that we can learn from business. Uh, it's called a CRM, right? And I don't know if any of you have heard of this before. It's a customer a relationship management. It's a tool that businesses use to get data uh, for the sole purpose of building relationships, knowing who, who they are serving and uh, being able to surprise and delight and take action on this intelligence, on this data in ways that will feel uh, meaningful to the people they serve, right? And so uh, you might do some of this already, right? You know, you know your staff's name, everybody, Hopefully, you know everybody's name <laughs> on your staff. Like, I pray to God you know everybody's name. Uh, do you know the spouses, right? So hopefully, you know if your people have a partner, that kind of thing or whatever. Uh, I'm sure you hear Alba. She loves to show up, like I said, in uh, Bark during webinars. One second. We'll lock her out of the room. All right. Um, so name, spouse, children. Speaking of Alba, pets, do they have any pets? Uh, birthdays, do you know everybody's birthday? Not memorized, but do you have this information collected somewhere? Do you know their anniversaries, right? Uh, with, their, with their partner. Uh, do you know their anniversary of when they started work in your building? So you could celebrate. This was, uh, we read this, man, like four or five years ago in the Mastermind, Power Moments. Like we, we celebrate test scores, attendance, stuff like that. What if you celebrated... Uh, somebody's uh, 5,000 student that they've taught. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, you would, need to, you would need to know that. And through a CRM, you would collect that kind of data. Um, hobbies, favorite sport teams, right? Do you know their short-term and long-term goals? Not the baloney ones that they probably tell you for evaluation reasons, you know? But like, what, what do people really want to become in their lives, you know? Do they have bucket list stuff? Are there places they want to travel or experiences they want to have? So on and so forth. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say on that one. But uh, preferred format of communication, right? Typically, as a leader, we communicate in the way that is our default, how we like to communicate and what's easiest for us. But, you know, leadership is service. And so if you know that half your staff wants email, 30% wants some sort of video, 20% you know, wants a paper in their mailbox, do you do that? Well, what would happen if you did? You know, would they feel a little more connected to you and seen and heard and appreciated? Probably. So those are some ideas there. I will say I do this myself and I use a free tool called Trello, right? And it's not even built to be a CRM tool, but you can use it that way. Uh, you could use Airtable, you can use Asana, you could use just a spreadsheet, you could use a notebook, right? So don't get caught up on the tool. The tool doesn't matter. You could go buy a CRM software and pay all sorts of money. The point is, know your people. That's what I'm trying to express, right? This is a business book, and I think um, Jesse has the link for it for you, and he'll put it in the chat. Uh, I think you should read it, though. It's called Never Lose a Customer Again. And it's about turning any sale into lifelong loyalty. All right, business, so what? What you'll get from this book is a world-class uh, training on onboarding. And if you think your onboarding experience, 
Wait, hold on. Do you even have an onboarding experience? I hope you do, right? <laughs> but if you want to level up, seriously level up your onboarding experience, this book, although it talks about business, you can translate it to education. It's, it's simple stuff like, I don't know, 45 days into a new hire's uh, tenure at, at your school, what if you sent them a box with some cool school swag stuff and they didn't know it was coming, right? There's literally a bazillion ideas in there, okay? So anyways, check out that book. I think you'll um, really love it. All right. So in summary today, you know, we discussed uh, three big ideas. Uh, big idea number one was the one obstacle you must overcome to achieve your goals. And again, so sorry, not sorry, that obstacle is you. <laughs> and so connect to your future self. That was the solution. Connect to your future self and you'll get around it. Big idea number two was how to guarantee your feedback will land better than it currently is. And the solution there, we had uh, understanding that feedback is evaluation, coaching, and appreciation. And also, we looked at the radical candor grid. And again, all these books, you know, we've been sharing in the chat and encourage you to pick them up, of course, after you get mine. And then big idea number three was what uh, schools can learn from business uh, when it comes to building a world-class culture. And I want to challenge you to pick up Never Lose a Customer Again. And uh, I want you to consider what would it look like to use some sort of CRM strategy to just collect data on things that matter to the people you serve, the faculty, so that you can build awesome relationships and build a world-class culture. So that's what we talked about today. Now, I'd love to talk about how you can take those big ideas and more and apply them in the real world and get amazing results. And like I mentioned at the beginning of our training, I launched the Principal Success Path in the first cohort uh, last summer. And in, uh, let's see, March 13th, we're going to actually launch our second cohort. And our promise is you'll become more effective in just five weeks. There's been some really important changes that I made in the Principal Success Path. Uh, the big ideas, it went from a 90-day program, so 12 weeks to five weeks. So it's a sprint. March 13th, April um, 14th, uh, it went from like really consuming over 15 hours of video content and uh, enjoying it and going to live calls to a uh, shorter amount of content with a focus on creating and shipping what I call 13 projects. Uh, there's a focus from the learning to the doing part, collaboration and feedback and reflection. So uh, if you were here at the beginning of the training, I asked you what do these images all have in common? And for me, uh, it's about you, it's about reflection. Um, the domino, you know, uh, there's a great book, The One Big Thing. What's the one thing I can do today that makes everything else easier or unnecessary? And that's related to that third picture because it's about ripple effect, right? It's about optimizing our leadership. The second one, and this is just a, a tip of the hat towards the principal success path, it is a dialed in uh, sprint five-week program that is the path towards, you know, becoming an awesome leader. And the puzzles are all about collaboration. So 13 projects, I'd love to talk about those really fast. First one, 90-day plan. I'm not diving into these. Um, we're going to talk about staff appreciation, leadership boundaries. Could you benefit from that? Forward progress and what does commitment look like? Uh, building your empathy muscle. Like we got some really good training on empathy. Uh, ruckus maker mindset. I'll talk about that literally all day. Inputs versus outputs. We are very focused on outputs in education. Inputs matter more, believe it or not. Pleasing versus serving. Oof, you need to hear this one. Believe me. Building your ideal week. Uh, feedback and candor the stories we tell and the impact that they have, authenticity, belonging, and challenge. And then at the end, there's a new path forward. That's the nice uh, exclamation point at the end of the program. Now, the principal success path, if, if you've been following me and my work for a while, uh, you know that one of my mentors and heroes is Seth Godin. 
And uh, I was a participant in a program he built called the Alt MBA. And I've coached for him in the Alt MBA. I don't know, like more times than I can count at this point. I just finished coaching Alt MBA 50 in February. That program is built on four pillars. And so I've used their framework and put the better leaders, better schools, uh, experience and wisdom and uh, perspective through that framework just for you, ruckus makers. And so the four pillars of the principal success path, first one is a program that is very focused on collaboration. Uh, this is different than the mastermind that meets once a week because this is a sprint, five weeks. You'll collaborate with your team three times throughout the week. Uh, the second pillar is shipping your project, right? Ideas are easy. Execution is everything is what John Doerr says. So taking incredible amounts of action is the second pillar. Uh, pillar three is commenting and feedback. So I'll challenge you in the program to uh, comment on at least five of your peers' projects uh, and we'll, you know, if you choose to join, we'll talk about what generous commenting looks like, but you will level up the feedback you can give your staff by providing feedback in the principal success path. And then the last pillar is reflection, which is really a, a key to leveling up. And it's just, yeah, solidifies all the learning from the experience. All right. So sometimes you're going to need, you know, a little bit of help in terms of um, leveling up. And if you want to apply today to the principal success path, if that sounded super cool, the projects, the pillars that I just described, uh, the little bit of training that we did today, then that is the website. And I'm sure Jesse will put a link for you in the chat. Um, so no strings attached. You know, I hope you got value from the training. This training, um, the path will take it even deeper. I promise you that. And it's at betterleadersbetterschools.com principal success path. Now, of course, there's some sort of investment, you know, involved in that. And uh, people might get, you know, weird about money, but I'm going to address that because I'm sure everyone's thinking it. Um, but again, I want to assure that, you know, the principal success path will make you more effective. The promise is just five weeks, right? It's the ruckus maker guarantee. And I don't know if you're aware of this. The ruckus maker guarantee is this. If you do anything mastermind related, principal success path with me, and there's that exchange of value, right? The training and then, you know, finances and time. If you don't grow, uh, but you engage in the material and you show up and you could honestly say that that didn't grow me, 100% of your investment will be returned to you. I would be thrilled to do that. Luckily, it hasn't happened for me yet. And I think that speaks to the quality of what I build but I wanna absorb the risk. This makes whatever I build, it has to be awesome or I'll be you know, losing revenue that's generated. Um, there's three levels of investment, which again, like I said, I would talk about the money piece. And so there's three levels of investment, which include three levels of support. I don't wanna make any assumptions about what the right level might be for you. So tier one is just the principal success path. And I say like just with like a wink and a nod because that is awesome in itself. And so that's the program. It's five weeks. You start, you're done. You're good to go. Tier one, the principal success path, that's $1,500. Okay. Now tier two is more support. And we have current mastermind members on this call. So tier two is the principal success path and an annual mastermind membership, right? That's tremendous support. Mastermind membership for the year, that's, that's a weekly uh, board of directors that are cheering for your success and pushing for you to be your best, right? So that together is 4,500, right? You can see how that's more support. That's for the year. Now, uh, tier two, I just want to show you, break that down. If you were to come and join these programs separately, the path you already saw was 1,500, the mastermind is 350 a month right now. So that's 4,200 for the year. So the total is 5,700, but for you, it's 4,500. So that's a special deal that I'm offering to folks that are on this, um, on this training, 1,200 in savings. Now, tier three, this is crazy levels of support. And basically think about it's you and one of your teammates, right? So the principal success path and the annual mastermind membership 
Maybe it's a principal and AP type of thing. All right. It's tier three. So times two, if you did this together, right, two paths would be obviously 3,000, two masterminds, obviously 8,400. So that totals 11,400. This is crazy. Look, 7,500 for two people to do the mastermind for the year and two principal success paths. Like the mastermind members get it. They're going, yeah, that's, that's nuts. And uh, that's why I do the <laughs> blow in your head emoji. Look at this one. Whoa, it's crazy. All right, it really is. So you can apply here, betterleadersbetterschools.com. There's no pressure, but if you want to grow in five weeks or less, uh, that's a really awesome opportunity. Um, one of the benefits I will tell you with the path is to get more done in five weeks than you probably have in the last five months. Uh, I won't stretch to say five years, but maybe, maybe for some of you, potentially. Uh, second benefit is just connecting. And I, I remember somebody saying at the beginning of this training, I'm here to network and connect with some leaders, right? So uh, I encourage you all, put your email you know, in the, in the chat if you want to connect, that kind of thing. Um, actually, we'll put, uh, we have a Facebook group. And so Jesse, don't let me get off this call without putting the link in there. Um, so anyways, you connect with other uh, amazing ruckus makers. Uh, benefit three, this is Cleopatra. She had a lot of influence. The path will teach you to be a great leader. I guarantee that. Here's something uh, we're currently reading in the mastermind, The Promises of Giants by John Amici. Listen to what he says. This is crazy. Crazy good. If you are not open to focused introspection and you do not practice it on a routine basis, you will not be a great leader. To be authentic, emotionally literate, intellectually curious, adaptable, and connected and engaged with those around you introspection cannot be ignored, right? And a big piece of the principal success path, pillar four, is reflection. The best leaders are highly reflective. And then benefit four, if you join the path, I want you to steal the ideas. Literally, one of my values is the ripple effect. In the mastermind, we teach stuff and people use it in their school immediately, right? And they see the benefit. So you're going to learn about uh, great communication, great feedback, what real collaboration and teamwork looks like, uh, all this kind of stuff. You're going to learn about learning in ways that you didn't think was possible. If you know Seth Godin, like I said, my mentor, he, he's very critical at times about education. I don't, I don't go as far as him with that, but I do want to evolve and iterate you know, and make a ruckus in education. You can steal the ideas from the path and apply that to your school for sure. There are a few bonuses, so I want to go over those really, really fast. One would be a bonus coaching call. Um, I did communicate this out if you subscribe to my emails, and I will say the five calls uh, for me, those are already taken, but we do have some slots. So if you apply and you're accepted to the program, you'll get a deep dive coaching call with another expert BLBS coach. Uh, 10 people on this call, if you apply and are accepted, I will autograph my latest book and send it out to you. That's another bonus. And then the last bonus, um, the original principal success path, it was totally different. Like I said, over 15 hours of training videos and content. I'm just going to give you all that content as a bonus. And that's, that's pretty amazing uh, by itself. Uh, right now it's on Facebook. So hopefully you have a Facebook account. If you don't, I'll figure out how to make it right for you and get you all that content. So those are the bonuses. All right. So principal success path, become more effective in, in five weeks. You'll get more done in five weeks. You'll connect with other amazing ruckus makers. I promise, I guarantee I will teach you to be a great leader. And that last benefit, you could steal the process and apply it to your school. And again, betterleadersbetterschools.com slash principal success path. That's it. That's what I want to share. I'm sure some people might have some questions. Um, and if there's anything I could do to be of value or answer for you, I am here to serve. Jesse, thank you for putting uh, the Facebook group link in there. That's totally free, just so everybody knows too. Um, the other, th thank you, Bill. That's really kind of you to say. 
as you're thinking of a question, if you have one, no pressure, I do want you to put what was your number one insight from today's training? Because that kind of real time feedback helps me understand what you find beneficial. And I want to make sure that uh, I do more of that. Bill says, number one, uh, know my people better, even better. And you don't necessarily have to put this in the chat. You can. You can come off mute. doesn't matter to me. But since I am about action, what, what uh, thank you, Maria Irene. Um, what does the next first step look like for you, right? So if you want to know your people even better, what's something you can do uh, today or next thing tomorrow morning, right, to do that? Um, can I just ask one quick question? Yeah, that's why um, we're here. <clears throat> so um, when I first uh, saw this, I was thinking that there's an, there's an assistant principal that I work with who also has some similar visions yeah. um, that I do or just wants to get better, wants to get better. Um, and do you think it's better to do it um, like as an individual so that you have all these or do you think it's better to partner with somebody who you might be in a building with? Wait, what do you think is beneficial there? I'm just. Yeah. All right. Um, so I don't know. I guess if you're talking about that and maybe you're thinking about the third tier, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, anyways, if, if colleagues join a mastermind, we separate them in the mastermind. Because uh, sometimes, hey, you know, there might be a conflict or, or something, you know, that they just need to get off their chest. But the principal success path is a different type of experience than the mastermind. Uh, and so anyways, I think it would be lovely for uh, coworkers to go through that process together, because what it'll do is it, it's going to give you a common language, right? You're not going to learn new acronyms and all this kind of like baloney type of stuff, but you are going to get that new perspective. and you'll be on the same page, which will be like pouring jet fuel into that vision in your school. Right. And so I, I think that is a, a pretty cool opportunity. I, I would, if you could swing it, I would do that for sure. Does that help? Thanks, Tiffany. And folks, you know, I'm just going to hang around and answer questions. So don't feel like you need to stick around. Um, but if you do have a question, I'm here to serve. Like, that's why I show up. And so uh, I will say thank you so much for investing time. And I, I hope um, you had great, great uh, insights. Danny, if I just could, um, for a second, talking just, I mean, the whole idea of the mastermind and the, you know, the question that you had, Tiffany, I know that we've talked about it before because of the great value. Um, there are creative ways to, to fund it and to pay for it. So I don't know if you want to hit any of those things that we've come up with um, in talking to the mastermind and things like that to help people out, get some seriously good training. Thanks, Barb and Bill. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, I mean, it really depends. You know, there's uh, some people invest out of pocket. There's a lot of people that do um, some like Bill's, Bill's district. I don't think he minds saying like he, he gets a PD line, right? And so he uses that. Other schools, they uh, uh, title funds are actually appropriate, you know, because there's, you can do leadership development, same thing with ESSER. And so all those kind of things are available. I've yet to see, uh, but I think this would work for highly engaged PTAs and PTOs, you know, they like, who wouldn't want their school leader better, right? Um, and I'm just spitballing and, and thinking out loud, but uh, there is a, I do want to start reaching out to PTA and PTO presidents just to educate, say, hey, I, I serve your school leaders. You want to partner and like, you know, uh, help these people out. And so um, I just, you know, you got to prioritize, right? So I haven't gotten to that yet. But I, I, I know there's some PTAs and PTOs that would invest in their in their school leader did i miss some chris because i know some people they look at grants uh and 
Well, no, I don't want to um, reveal that secret right now. But did I miss anything? No, no, I don't. I don't think you did. We had we had talked about the possibility of grants. We talked about um, using it as a PD piece. You mentioned the, the specific PD line and contracts. Sometimes that's a good way to negotiate contracts. If you get a higher PD right. line, you can take a little less in salary, things like that. Yeah, and one thing that I forgot, like, um, you know, there's there's a number of school leaders specifically in Delaware that I serve. And uh, in one district specifically, they, they do their budgets in March. And maybe that's true for you as well. So that's something that, like, uh, yeah, anyways, if you build it in, then it'll be there for next year too, so. Cool. Any other questions? Oh, Jesse, you have to remind me to smile when I'm presenting too, because sometimes. <laughs> I will crack myself up at times at jokes, but I got to remember to smile. All right, cool. I think everybody sounds like they're good. So listen, love you all. I really appreciate your time and uh, I hope you have a great day. So.